I'm the head blacksmith here at the Frontier Culture Museum. Uh, thank you all for joining us today for a little bit of a virtual tour. Welcome to our Irish Forge. Now here at the museum, we try and keep most all of our iron work, any of our metal work that you're seeing on any of the farms here, we try to keep them coming out of this particular workshop. Now, here at the museum, we try and use as many reproduction pieces that we actually make on site at every single farm you'll be visiting today. And that's where our job comes in. So we are actually down here when the shop is open making all sorts of things, whether it's kitchen implements, hardware, tools, knives, nails, whatever we need on any of our farms here, we try to make them right here in the shop. Now, this particular workshop that we're standing in right now, this is actually another building that was relocated here from Europe. So this blacksmith shop was built right around 1800 and originally was located in County Fermanagh in the north of Ireland. Now, this particular structure was built right around 1800, but from a narrative standpoint, we're trying to tell a story a little bit closer to around 1750, mid 18th century. So this particular blacksmith shop would have been part of a very, very small farming community in the north of Ireland. We're talking maybe three to 400 people living there. And for the most part, we're talking not really a town so much as it is a farming community spread out over several miles in the north of Ireland. So imagine wide open countryside and every couple of miles you're going to find a little tiny farmhouse. And at the center of this community, you're going to find this workshop. This blacksmith shop is where most of the people in the community were coming to have custom iron work, whether or not they needed repair work done, maybe they needed barrier work done, uh, shoeing horses, maybe they needed the work of a locksmith where you needed to be making padlocks and keys. Uh, maybe you're making slight repairs to hunting firearms or things of that nature in a shop like this. Granted, this is a pretty small community. You probably don't have access to a lot of the more specialized workshops you would have had in larger towns or cities. Barriers, gunsmiths, locksmiths, bladesmiths, all of these would have been more specialized in their work. And in larger cities, you went to them for that sort of work. But here, considering this is a couple days ride from probably the nearest larger town, you're going to be having your local blacksmith do a lot of that work here in the shop. Now, speaking of farrier work, shoeing horses and ponies and donkeys and whatever you need, that's actually what I'm doing a little bit of today. In the middle of forging out a couple of horseshoes. You can see there we've started with a piece of bar and we're starting to bend it around into a U-shape that's more discernible for a horseshoe. Now, this particular workshop is probably going to be a family business. So, here in this community, we're talking about a community of tenant farmers, people who don't actually own their property, they're actually leasing and renting it from an English landlord. And these people are actually what we have come to know here in the States as Scotch-Irish. But in the north of Ireland you would have never heard that phrase. You would have heard the people living here were instead referred to as Ulster Scots. So these are people of Scottish descent which moved from the lowlands of Scotland into Ireland in the early to mid 1600s. And had been leasing and renting land here from the English. Now, most of the people in this community, they're gonna be working very, very hard to make sure that they have money to pay their rent and their taxes. And a lot of them, as you'll learn in a little bit, we're probably taking up different trades to help pay that. The blacksmith was gonna be no different. So here in this shop, we're going to be working very hard to make sure that we can pay the same rent and the same taxes that they are. But given that this is a fairly busy space to be in, we probably never lacked for repair work or custom orders that were coming into this shop. And so we might have had a little bit of an easier time than our neighbors did, but it was still a very hard job. And because there was so much work to be done here, you're probably going to find this is actually a family business. Usually the master of the shop, the father of the household, is going to be the one operating and sort of managing the business. But his wife, his sons, his daughters, anybody in the family who was able to help out and work, we're probably going to be right down here alongside him. 
And oftentimes, if something were to happen to the husband, usually the wife was the one who wound up taking over the business. have to finish taking that piece of flat bar, bending it around into our U-shape, and we'll have a finished horseshoe. Now typically if you were making horseshoes in here, you probably actually do all the forging here, get the shoes fit to the right size, with the horse standing right there. You bring them right here into the shop and size and fit the shoes, trim their feet, get everything nailed into the hoof, and then send them on their way. And a busy blacksmith shop like this might be shoeing 15 and 20 ponies and donkeys a day. At the busiest, of course. So that's almost there. We're going to do a couple more cracks on the other side and we'll call this one done. Now, of course, we're working with iron and steel in here, so we keep our coal forge burnt. Coal forge burning, there we go. At a temperature anywhere from around 1600 to 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the temperature at which these metals like to move very, very easily. And depending on how bright the color of the metal when I pull it out, that's going to determine how hot it is. And so a blacksmith in the 18th century could look at that metal, see what color it was, and know automatically what they could do with it. things I need to tweak, but that's a finished horseshoe. Well, you all have a good day visiting the rest of our farms.